hey what is up youtube welcome to a new video this is gonna be a follow-up video on the diy portable monitor that i made about three months ago and uh, in this video i'm gonna finish up the project because as you can see it's not quite a finished product as it would not even stand by itself as you can see i haven't installed stands and also this device is not able to run off batteries at the moment as you can see so you have to rely on a power adapter connected to the wall so for a portable monitor you should be able to run it off batteries throw it in a backpack and have a dual monitor set up anywhere at school at work uh, without having to rely on the wall outlet so a viewer actually commented on the last video and asked if I was going to be able to make one that runs off batteries. And yep, this is going to be the video where I make it independent from the wall. And these are basically the batteries I decided to go with. These are lithium ion batteries. The form factor is uh, 18650s. I would basically be making a 3S or uh, 2P battery pack using these cells right here it would be better if you have brand new cells but i recycled these uh removed these from an old laptop they're still good the average capacity is like 1700 which is uh, not bad let's go ahead and uh, build the battery for portable display all right so the batteries are sorted i have six cells so two in parallel and the three sets in series for a total voltage of uh, 12 volts because that's what the uh, monitor is rated for and then I'm gonna design an enclosure and uh, uh, make a battery that we can hook up on the back of the display and then I will design a um, let's say stands small stands to uh, so the display can stand by itself LiPo batteries are a better option for these builds because of their form factor. As you can see, they're really flat. And I didn't use this because I don't have uh, at least three similar cells to use because it's a 3S battery that we're trying to build. So I decided to go with the 18650 batteries. They're not going to be too thick because. Uh, the enclosure of the display controller is already uh, like an inch thick and this one is not going to make that any thicker so I'm fine alright so from here we're gonna go ahead and uh, build the battery we're basically gonna glue these cells and weld them and make a 3S 2P for 12 volt battery and then we will wire the BMS this is a battery management system basically used to ensure that the batteries are charged equally and uh, the discharge is also done safely so I will have links to all the 3d models in the video description if you want to download them as well as links to all the parts I use in this video so feel free to let me know if you have any questions and uh, Let's get started. To weld the batteries, I will be using this part welder. This is the K weld that I reviewed a few years ago. I will link a video if you want to check it out. And I will be also using these pure nickel strips cut to size. And here are the batteries laid out. So obviously you're gonna have to test the batteries if you're recycling them like I do. But if you're buying brand new batteries for this, you can just go ahead and weld them together because they will be more than likely in the same capacity range so the batteries have to be in the same capacity range i printed this to help me keep the batteries aligned all 
right? And then we're gonna place the nickel strip. Maybe we can increase the power to 60, why not? All right, as you can see, we have a nice spot weld. These are already in parallel. We're gonna flip that around. And then we're gonna weld four at a time, just like this. Next. And then we're gonna flip it again. And this time we're gonna weld all four together. And then the two cells left. Next is to go ahead and glue the cells. Next is the heat resistant tape. Next step, we wanna go ahead and install the BMS. So I found this layout to be the best just like this. So each terminal is close to wherever it's supposed to go. So we have B minus going to the negative of the battery. B1 goes to the positive of battery one, which is right here. We have B2 goes to the positive of battery two, which is right here. And then we have B positive, which is uh, the terminal going to the positive of battery three or the last battery. So P positive and P negative are basically the output where you would be charging the battery and discharging the battery. Tin the BMS terminals. Glue the BMS to the battery. So for the balance leads, I ended up not using wires, uh, chose to use the nickel strips, it's a lot cleaner as you can see, it's uh, better than having wires running all over the place. So now I have the P- minus and the P- positive to connect wires to and figure out how to uh, connect that to the display in a way where I can remove the battery and reinsert it. For the output voltage, we have 11.49 volts. So I'll be using a standard barrel jack connector, one male and one female.
next step I'm gonna solder the barrel jack to the BMS the positive is gonna go to P plus and the negative is gonna go to P minus insert it through here just like this I'll make sure this is all the way basically filled the hole with glue to ensure that this doesn't back up. Next is the charge port. Gonna solder it first. Positive to positive. And negative to negative. just like this all right now I'm gonna let this dry while I'm working on the 3d model for the case and the base where we will be mounting the battery cover is printed so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glue this permanently onto the case this is gonna go right here like this and then I'm gonna use these vices to hold everything tight So I'm gonna let this sit until the glue dries. This is going to be the base where the battery is going to latch on. So this is going to be uh, permanent on the back of the display. And then the battery is going to be mounted onto this. So this is a permanently enclosed battery pack. battery goes right here and slides to lock just like this all right and to remove it you just slide it back and lift 
So I'm just going to make some micro adjustments. So here is the final version of the battery mount. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put everything together. This time it's uh, latching a lot better, as you can see. Drop it like this, slide the lock, as you can see. And to remove it, just slide it back, lift. So as you can see the battery setup is uh, looking good. We have the battery latching correctly and everything secured to the back of the display. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the stands. I will be using M3 screws. Same thing on the other side. This one has a weird shape. I had to make it match. This is gonna be like this. And now we have a stand that can actually keep the display up. Now the display can stand by itself. And here is the back. And now we have a display powered by the battery and to remove the battery we basically push it just like this and it comes out and you can make as many batteries as you want so you can use them as a backup not really necessary because this should be able to run for at least two and a half hours obviously that's going to depend on the display the size and the power consumption but for this one, I'm able to run it for uh, two and a half hours. This goes right here, just like this. I also wanted to make a power button on the battery, 
but that was unnecessary because the display has a, a controller to turn it on I can just use the remote controller and turn it on or off as well as uh, change the settings and swap the inputs if the display you're using doesn't have a remote controller to turn it off you can just slide the battery out and disconnect it this will turn the display off you can go ahead and uh, connect a charger to it any 12 volt adapter would work you just connect any 12 volt adapter to this charge port and it's gonna recharge the battery very easily and if you don't want to use the battery you can remove it and just connect the charger straight to this port right here and now you're gonna run the display from the wall which is really nice So this is how you build a DIY battery powered portable monitor. If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. And again, as usual, I will have links to all the parts I use in this build in the video description. So feel free to download them. And uh, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one. Peace out.